Welcome back here, distillers and brewers and hobbyists. Uh, we've already done a lot with this PID, and this is the 120 volt PID circuit. Uh, we've wired this, we've used 14 gauge wire because that'll handle 15 amps. Uh, so, and we're at peak value again, just to repeat. We're using a 1500 watt heater element, divide that by 120 volts, 12.5 amps is our peak value. So we, we're, we're well within our safety margin. So we're using 14 gauge wire, and we're using lower gauge wire, 16 and 18, for you know signaling and other little things that aren't gonna draw a whole lot of amps. But the ones that we're really concerned with are the ones that are going through this receptacle that's gonna operate our heating element. Now, we have done a lot up to this point, and if you follow it step by step, you're just about at the very end where you can put all this together. At any time, you can put it together and stick it in a box. We went through the very basic model, which is the very beginning. Then we've added the amp meter, which is right here. We did that on the last video. Now we're gonna add the cooling fan. Now you can do the cooling fan in a couple of different uh, fashions. Uh, you could spend the money on it. Some, they, now they'll run you anywhere from 20 to 60 bucks. It all depends on what you get. Uh, if you get a small, you know, to a one and a half by one and a half inch fan uh, that's 120 volts, you wire that in exactly the same way you did the PID. You just find a hot and a neutral and you wire it right in. Uh, I'd recommend you wire it in somewhere past the switch so that it comes on when you turn the switch on. Uh, or you can go the route, I, the route that I chose was, uh, you know, gosh, I spent maybe three bucks for a small Evercool fan. And these are the, fine, the, the, the kind of cooling fans you'll find in your, uh, in your PCs. Uh, they're in the back of the PC. You know, you'll hear it come on when you turn the PC on. Uh, and they run off 12 volts, really, really low amps. But uh, they, this one runs at like 4,500 RPMs and does a really good job of cooling. Now, here begs the question, do you really need a fan? Well, if you're using a 1,500 watt, 12.5 uh, amps, chances are with the heat sink that's on the solid state relay, and that's that piece of metal on the back, that heat sink kind of dissipates that heat. And it does a pretty good job. Now if you put it in a box and you've got a couple of air holes for ventilation, uh, chances are you're going to be okay. Uh, if you ever increase the amperage that's going through that, because remember amperage is going to be dissipated as heat because it's a lot more pressure. Um, it, you might want to put a fan in there just to make sure that you're safe and make sure it doesn't overheat itself because once it overheats it's not going to do anything but wind up potentially if it gets hot enough it's going to melt something uh, and you don't want that to happen uh, it's not going to melt itself because it's rated to handle that amperage but anything around it, it gets hot enough it might so if you throw a fan in there you just all you're doing is ensuring yourself a little bit more of that safety margin Plus, as we always say, your cool points go way up because you got a fan inside there. So, it's your option to put a fan in or not. Now, if you do put a fan in, and the one, I went with a DC fan because they're a whole, they're a whole lot cheaper. Uh, and they're just as easy to assemble or to install as an AC fan. I got these small integrated circuits, and this is a small transformer. Now, I know I showed you one of the earlier films, uh, uh, the earlier videos, uh, we had uh, the, the larger transformer. Uh, but that's a 120 volt to 12 volt AC transformer. So you'd still need an AC fan, but a 12 volt AC fan. Uh, and in this particular case, this is gonna convert from AC to DC, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for direct current from alternating current, which means that instead of having that sine wave of positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, we're gonna have a positive lead and a negative lead, 12 volts. Now, the way this thing is made, it's, it's actually the input is 100 to 200 volts alternating current. And its output is 12 volts at 0 .5, 0 0.85 amps. So it's really low amperage, but it puts out a direct current voltage. And the way that does that, you'll notice on here, it has ACN, which is the neutral, and an ACL, which is the load. Now, remember, we talked about that. The neutral is the white wire, and the load is the black wire. So... On the back pins, I just, I, I've already done this on one on here, just a solder to lead here and a solder to lead here. I did the neutral and the load. Now on the other one, you have your DC out. And on this one you have plus VO, plus positive volts out and negative volts out. So I did that as well. I just soldered some leads on the back and I've got that on the board. 
Okay, now one last thing I want to show you is that I, I located these at, matter of fact, I think I got these at Lowe's, um, but they're available. You know the old wire nuts you use, you know, you put the wires together, you put, the, you know, the nut on, and you screw it down, and it holds the wires together, and that's how you make the connection? Well, they've got these now, and uh, they're called Insure, and this is a four-port, and I'll show you what a four-port looks like. Um, just a small device. Uh, they're pretty nifty, and they've got four holes in the bottom, four ports. And what you do is you strip the wires and stick a wire in there. And then if you stick another wire in there, you've just connected two wires. Well, you can stick another wire in there. Now you got three connected. Or being a four port, you can put four wires in here. And it's just like putting four wires together with a wire nut. It's just, you know, whatever trips your trigger. So that's what I used. Now here's what we were looking for. We were looking for, we know we've got a transformer and a converter because it's going to convert from AC to DC. And we're going to need 120 volts to make that work in order for the 12 volts to come out the other side. So there are a bunch of different places you can take 120 volts from. Uh, we can agree that 120 volts is going to come in this bottom pin. And then if you turn the switch on, it'll come in, it'll come out the top. So we always want to make sure we've got our power where we want it, when we want it. Now, you can wire this any way you like. I don't care where you take your 120 volts from. I'll give you a couple of recommendations. One is you don't want to take it from the receptacle because the receptacle's only going to be hot when your heating element's on. So what about that heat that's built up that you're trying to dissipate with a fan when the heating element goes off? Well, if you hook it here, your fan only works when the receptacle's energized. So we probably want to skip that one. Uh, you could take it from just about anywhere else. You could take it from the lead that's going to the PID. Because you know that when you turn the switch on, you energize the PID. Well, that's always an option. What I did is I took another option was uh, to take the lead that goes from the switch to the solid state relay in the very center. I put one of those four prong ports. I just broke the wire in the center, stripped it, and stuck one there. Now, I did the same thing. Remember, you can take the neutral lead from just about anywhere, as long as it's available. Uh, I used the top screw and the bottom screw, so and I didn't want to put another screw or put another lead on another screw, so I just broke the line, stripped it back, and I put another four-port connector there. So here's how this works. Let me pull these out, because I've already got these stripped back. I've got that sitting there. This is the white line, the white lead, that goes to the neutral. I'm going to bring this over here, and I'm going to stick this in. I'll show you. This is, this is what I like these, because they're so easy to use. All you do is stick it in, and it's connected. Then I'm going to take the black lead, which is the hot wire, and the hot wire is going to go into the hot four-port connector. Bam. There we go. So now we've got a system. Our PID, we took our basic PID... We added an amp meter by putting it in the line that goes to the receptacle. And we broke the line that goes from the switch to the SSR. And we added a 12-volt transformer converter. All that we got left to do now is to plug in our DC fan. And this comes with a really neat little plug. All you do is plug it in. And that connection is made. So, when does the fan work? Well, the fan works. We've got it plugged in now. Yep. The fan works as long as you turn the power on. And there it goes. You can see our fan is operating. If we turn the power off, the fan stops rotating. So every time you flip the power on, every time your PID comes on, your fan comes on. So you've got constant cooling, a constant flow of air through your box, through your, yeah, whatever, whatever you're using to store your PID in. Okay. Gosh, that's about all I got for you today. <laughs> See how simple that is? Now, you can take all this mess, pick a picture of it. Uh, when you get it together, so you'll know where everything goes, you'll know how it goes, uh, pull your box out, start to organize and get everything straight. Put all your components inside your box. Plug it in, turn it on, and give it a shot. You can't ask for much more than that. That's how simple it is. So, until next time, uh, you know the routine. Like us on Facebook, send us an email if you got some questions, you got some comments. 
Uh, we love what we do. We're going to keep on doing it. So to all you brewers and distillers and hobbyists out there, happy distilling.